This is A7 English Podcast, and you're listening to an adventure fantasy novel. The Desolate Era. Book 10, Entering the Immortal Estate. Chapter 21, Preparing a Celebratory Feast. This impressive group of experts filed into a corridor, arriving at a massive, towering hall. The hall was lined with seats, and the walls were lined with musical instruments. This must have been the place where, when Immortal Witchriver was alive, he would marry make with his monstrous clansmen. Young Flame Nong laughed loudly. These tables, these pillars, and these sculptures, all of them are utterly exquisite and extraordinary. Ning and the others all nodded. They could completely imagine how, countless years ago, the dire monsters would all be seated next to those tables, eating and drinking and making merry. And there. That's the place where Immortal Witchriver must have Saturday. Young Flame Nong pointed towards the front of the hall. The front of the hall had the most beautiful, lavish table of all, and decorative screen behind it was also exquisite. To each side of the decorative screens, there were bronze lamps. That bronze lamp was the core of this Witch River Palace, Young Flame Nong said, pointing towards a Zifu disciple. Go next to that bronze lamp. Yes. These Zifu disciples were all death sworn. They knew very well that they had been trained, solely for the purpose of obeying their master. If their master was to order them to their deaths, they wouldn't hesitate at all. As soon as the Zifu disciple moved to walk towards the front of the hall. Boom! The entire hall instantly began to change in appearance. Ning and the others watched as the scenery around them transformed into a beautiful peach tree garden. They were surrounded by peach trees, and the floor was covered with petals. Careful! It is an illusory formation! Xiang Liofang shouted. I knew it. This place, the main palace, the Witch River Palace, there's no way we'd be able to acquire it so easily. Young Flame Nong laughed coldly. With Uncle Fong present, he wasn't nervous at all. This was a formation that had been in storage for countless years, and it didn't have anyone truly controlling it. At most, this formation would be able to unleash a tenth of its power. Assemble into formation. Ji Ning, Mu North Sun, Yue, Adept Vast River, and Nine Lotus all immediately assembled into that five elements, pentagonal formation. All of them were on their guard. This illusory formation is very formidable. Even divine sense is unable to see through it, Adept Vast River said. And I have a vague feeling that this formation is even stronger than the one which had been located in the Vault of Treasures. This formation seems to be gathering Azure Wood Godbolts, Ming said with a frown. It seems you understand a bit about formations as well. Xiang Liofang, standing next to Young Flame Nong, gave Ning a glance, then said calmly, This formation activates the power of the solar star. Using wood to guide the power, it generates azure wood god bolts. Although no one is controlling it, you still can't underestimate the power of the azure wood god bolts. I need some time to break this formation. I wish all of you the best during this time. Ning and the rest of the five moved closer to each other, prepared to deal with the Azure Wood God Bolts at any moment. They didn't dare to run about wildly. To do so in this illusory world was to seek death. Ah, uh, what should I do? Shui Hongi was panicking internally, but on the surface, he continued to grit his teeth and wait. Boom! 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 Suddenly, three bolts of Azure Lightning thundered down from up above smashing directly towards Young Flame Nong. Someone is commanding the formation? Xiang Liofang was shocked. How could someone be commanding it? The nearby Young Flame Nong was panicked as well. Whoosh! Xiang Liofang stretched his large hands out. His hands were like dark clouds capable of covering the skies and smothering the sun. They stretched out to those three bolts of lightning. Boom, boom, boom. The lightning struck against the giant hands, and although the giant hands sank down momentarily, and the skin on the hands split apart as lightning writhed and spat against them, the hands endured. Ha ha, young master, don't worry. While receiving the lightning bolts, Xiang Liofang actually began to laugh loudly. Immortal Witch River died countless hundreds of millions of years ago. The Witch River Palace definitely has no living creatures within it. Anything still surviving should be a golem. Generally speaking, golems only possess a simple level of intelligence. At most, they can activate formations. They aren't able to control them. After all, this sort of large formation is quite complicated. 
Without a mortal witch river passing down to the special technique to control it, there is no way they will be able to do so. If my guess is correct, the witch river palace should have a powerful golem within it, and this golem should have a sentient spirit animating it. Thus, this golem is extremely intelligent, and is thus also skilled in controlling formations. Immortal Witch River must have trusted him so much that he transmitted the formation control method to him. Xiang Liofan laughed. But unfortunately, he is still merely a golem, with no elemental key within his body. At most, he is capable of unleashing 20 to 30 percent of the power of the formation. As Xiang Liofan was speaking loudly, one bolt of thunder after another continued to come crashing down from the skies. Xiang Liofan, by himself, received all of these blows. Ning and the others let out sighs of relief. Xiang Liufang's guess was most likely accurate. To truly control a formation required the usage of elemental key. If the key was that of an immortal, then the power of the formation would naturally increase greatly. But golems didn't have any key at all. Even if they were able to control the formation, they would only be able to, at most, increase its power by a small amount. Humans, you are not the immortal's heirs. To barge into the Witch River Palace is a capital offense. A furious shout rang out from within the illusion of a peach garden. A capital offense? Who is going to carry out the penalty, you? If my guess is correct, you are at most comparable to an ordinary loose immortal in strength. Xiang Liu Fan laughed coldly. Your power is far from being a match for mine. As soon as his words came out, Xiang Liu Fan suddenly let out a savage howl. Break! Instantly, Xiang Liufang's hand swung outward, howling out as the fingers on his large hands all transformed into giant serpents. The ten giant serpents instantly latched onto something in the void and gave it a hard pull. The entire formation immediately seemed to have been stuck, and the peach blossom formation trembled, grew blurry, and completely vanished. How can this be? An astonished cry. With the disappearance of the peach blossom, Ning's group once more was able to see the giant hall and the tables within it. Not bad, not bad. I managed to survive. Fortunately, that golem was extremely intelligent, and knew that it had to kill young flame gnome, and so it focused all of its efforts on him. If those lightning bolts had struck amongst the rest of us, although those five of the black-white college would probably be able to endure it, I would have been in danger. Shui Hongi felt as though he had been blessed with tremendous luck. Last time, when he and Adept Buyu had faced those attacks from the golems, Adept Buyu had died, while he had been lucky and survived. He had then acquired an immortal-ranked magic treasure, and just now avoided yet another tribulation. He had survived multiple dangerous encounters, and had even acquired an immortal-ranked treasure. Wasn't this a tremendous blessing of luck? The formation is already broken. Xiang Liu Fang swept the hall with his gaze, then said calmly, Everyone, no need to be afraid. Immortal Witch River was only a celestial immortal, and his roots were not very deep. It is already quite impressive for him to have produced a golem that is fairly close to a loose immortal in power. If that golem doesn't appear, then fine. If he does, however, I'll capture him. Young Flame Known laughed and nodded, then instructed. There are golems lying in wait within the Witch River Palace. Everyone, don't run around rashly. If you run into those golems, Uncle Fan won't be able to save you in time. How could we dare to run about rashly? Are we suicidal? Shui Hongi heard they responded. Ning and the others shared a glance. Clearly, an extremely powerful golem was lying in wait within the Witch River Palace. They were no fools. Naturally, they wouldn't run about wildly within. Xiang Liu Fang and Yang Flame Nong moved to the front of the main hall, beginning to bind a bronze lamp. Haha, this is the core of the final palace. Young Flame Known was utterly delighted. After binding it, the entire immortal estate will be under my complete control. The Witch River Palace definitely has other dangers lurking within. However, there's no need at all for us to go and take any risks. Once I bind the immortal estate, the golems will naturally have lost. Ning and the others nodded. The rest of you be careful. Those golems won't just watch and wait for me to successfully bind this palace. I imagine they will try to ambush us, Young Flame Nong said. Eighteen savage, fearsome-looking Cheongchi Manticore golems were looking at their leader, a black-armored, muscular man. The black-armored man growled. That person who broke the formation just now, he is most likely a fiend god. 
He was able to make his hands so large, and his fingers transform into giant serpents. Only true fiend gods are capable of such a thing. From the techniques he displayed, I can tell that he is more powerful than me. Commander, what should we do? They are starting to bind the Witch River Palace. The Cheongchi golems were all panicking. I estimate he will need two hours to completely bind the Witch River Palace. The black armored man said in a low voice. We need to come up with a method, and we need to succeed in one try. We need to kill the humans that fiend god is protecting. From the conversation between those humans when they first arrived, that human should have already bound the other four palaces. This is the last one. Prepare to obey my orders. The black armored man's cold, dark eyes flashed with a freezing light. A group of Zifu disciples were scattered in the surrounding area. Ji Ning, Nai Lotus, Adept Vast River, Shuehongi, and the others were all waiting vigilantly, worried that the golem might suddenly attack. Young Flame Gnome, seated high above at the front of the hall and binding that bronze lamp, seeing how nervous everyone in the hall was, couldn't help but frown. He barked, No need to be so nervous. It's just a few golems. If one comes, Uncle Fang will capture one. They will definitely lose. Ji Ning and the others, including Shui Hongi, silently tightened their lips. Yes, Xiangliu Fang could defeat all comers. But the most powerful of those golems had the combat strength of an ordinary loose immortal. If golems of such power were to suddenly attack and catch this group off guard, some of them might die. They were not protected by Xiangliu Fang, after all. Attend me. Young Flame Gnome, seeing how Ning and the others remained vigilant, couldn't help but frown and bark. Prepare a celebratory banquet. Very soon, the two Zifu disciple maidservants who personally served Young Flame Gnome had prepared a banquet of fine wine. Actually, during the two-day journey on the warship from Serpent Wing Lake of Swallow Mountain to the Immortal Estate, they had often drank and enjoyed themselves, and so the fine wine had been prepared long ago. Very soon, the table became filled with wine, spirit fruit, and delicacies. Young Flame Nong sat down in the lotus position, laughing loudly as he scooped up a goblet of wine. He only needed to use up a small amount of his attention on binding the bronze lamp. Everyone, no need to worry. The outer perimeter will be handled by my Zifu Deathsworn. Even if golems attack, they'll be the first ones engaged, giving you enough time to react and fight back. Sit, all of you. Young Flame Known called out. Seeing Ning and the others continue to hesitate, he couldn't help but snap. I told you all to sit! Ning and the others exchanged a glance. They had no choice but to sit down. That's more like it. Young Flame Known laughed. You've all accompanied me into this Witch River Immortal Estate and engaged repeated dangers with me. You've rendered quite a few merits. However, this is the final moment. After I bind this bronze lamp, the task shall be complete. Although a few golems continue to resist, they aren't much to be worried about. Come, let us toast each other for the treasures we have gained, and for my successful binding of the Witch River Immortal Estate. After speaking, young Flame Known lifted up his bronze wine glass, etched with a tattoo of flames. Chapter 22 Young Flame Known's True Face Let us down this cup together. Chue Hongi hurriedly called out. He wanted to flatter Young Flame Known as best as he could, because in his heart, he was still thinking about later leaving the Witch River Immortal Estate, then fleeing alive with the immortal-ranked magic item in tow. My fellow disciples, we must be vigilant against the outsiders. Let's not drink this wine. Adept Vast River sent mentally. We were useful to him earlier, but now we are useless. Who knows what sort of tricks he might play. North Sun sent as well. But Nine Lotus said, I imagine he wouldn't dare to be so heartless and crazed. While sending mental messages amongst themselves, they all lifted up their cups and drank from it. Gulp! The wine entered Ji Ning's mouth, then a surge of elemental key surrounded the liquid. The liquid was completely vaporized by a streak of fire. Only then did Ning put down his wine cup. Chun and Ji, the two of you, perform a dance and help us enjoy ourselves. Young Flame Known was in an extremely fine mood as he gave the orders. Instantly, two of the female Zifu disciples behind him moved. Previously, their robes were in the shape of made robes, but the robes now changed. Their sleeves fluttered as the two of them laughed, unveiling their astonishing charisma as the two of them began to dance gracefully in the center of the palace hall. 
strum, clink. Three other nearby Zifu disciples who were musicians moved to those ancient musical instruments in the hall, then in a very practiced manner, began to drum and strum. Although countless years had passed, the instruments were completely undamaged, as they were all magical treasures. One melody rang out after another, while the beautiful courtesans danced. Young Flame Known was absolutely delighted with himself as he watched and drank, and Ning and the others all accompanied him. His spirits having grown increasingly high as he drank, Young Flame Known suddenly glanced sideways at the truly peerless, fairy-like beauty Yue. In terms of appearance and aura, even he, Young Flame Known, who had seen reincarnated fairy-like maidens in the capital of the Grand Xia Dynasty, felt her to be astonishing. His throat went a little dry, and his heart began to grow heated. The desire he had held down this entire time was beginning to rise. Still, he knew quite well that this rainbow flame fairy would probably be hard to convince. Thus, he then looked towards Nilotus, then laughed. Little sister Nilotus, now that I have completed my task, we need to have a good celebration. Little sister Nilotus, why don't you perform a dance to us and help us celebrate? Eh? Ming frowned, his face growing somewhat unsightly. Little sister Nilotus? This was not a form of address for young flame known to use. And he wanted Nilotus to dance? How could Ning not feel angry? This young flame known is going too far. Little Ching sent through the spirit link. Master, this young flame known holds you in no regard at all. He knows that you are Nilotus our Dao companions, but he still acts in such a way. Indeed, all of the others present in the hall were stunned. Nilotus was astonished as well. She first gave Ning a glance, then said hurriedly, Young master, young flame, I have no talent in dance. Compared with the beautiful courtesans you have by your side, I am far inferior. I'd rather not go up and embarrass myself. How can they compare with you, little sister Nilotus? Young flame known laughed. What, aren't you even going to give me, young flame known, even this tiny bit of face? Nilotus hesitated a moment, then put a smile on her face. Then I'll go up and dance to a song. At the same time, she gave Ning a glance. Ning just sat there, an ugly look on his face. It was just a dance. With so many fellow disciples present, it wasn't appropriate for Ning to grow angry. Ning, son, be careful. The white water hound sent spiritually. Inviting her to dance as part of the victory celebrations is a small matter. Young Flame Known clearly knows that you and Nine Lotus are Dao companions but when he asked her to dance, he didn't even look at you or say a single word to you. Clearly, he holds you in no regard at all. Given that, you need to be careful. Ming immediately came to his senses. Don't worry, Uncle White. I understand. Ning sent back, and then turned to look at Nai Lotus, who was dancing in the middle of the hall, in tune with the melodies. As Ning watched, he suddenly realized that Nai Lotus was actually a very skilled dancer. Truth be told, Ning knew far too little about the Dongyan clan and the other major clans. The people which future clan leaders like Nai Lotus interacted with were generally some of the more formidable figures of the entire Grand Xia dynasty, and thus she would learn a bit of this and a bit of that, so as to ensure that her performance in any event was perfect. Good, good, good. Young Flame Nong laughed as he drank his wine, occasionally clapping his hands in praise. Nai Lotus was like a blooming lotus flower swirling about throughout the hall. But as she moved closer to Young Flame Nong, Young Flame Nong suddenly swung his arm out. A long black whip actually swept out, coiling around Nine Lotus' arm, then tugging at her. Nine Lotus, caught completely off guard, couldn't help but be pulled even closer to Young Flame Nong. Still, Nine Lotus was a once young adept. By activating her elemental key, she managed to stabilize herself as she was pulled closer to Young Flame Nong. However, Young Flame Nong intimately grabbed her by the arm. He had originally actually been planning on taking her by the waist. Laughing, he pulled at Nilotus arm, wanting to pull her in while saying, Little sister Nilotus, come, let's drink a cup of wine together. This scene shocked everyone present in the hall. What? Mu North's son Yu Wei and the others were all shocked. As for Shui Hongi, he just gave Ning a sideways glance, revealing a cold smile as he took a sip of wine. Ning felt as though his head had gone blank. Earlier, Nina Lotus Dance could have been said to be a performance for everyone, but now... Bang! Ning suddenly rose to his feet, 
smashing his hand hard against the table. This table was technically a mortal ranked magic treasure, but it was only used for holding wine and food. It wasn't meant for combat. In addition, Ning was currently gripped by rage, and even his eyes had begun to turn bloodshot. This slap towards the table was actually even more powerful than the palm blows he would deliver in a life or death battle. The energy wave alone from this palm blow smashed all of the plates into tiny pieces, and the fine wine and meat were utterly transformed into dust. Boom! The entire table actually was split apart. Large amounts of shards went flying everywhere, and some of them actually sliced across the body of a nearby Zifu disciple, causing blood to instantly fly everywhere. Hmm? Young Flame Knowing immediately gave him a cold look. What, I can't even share a drink of wine with little sister Nilotus. As he finished speaking, a hint of anger appeared on Young Flame Nong's face. Young Flame Nong's anger would have instantly reduced most people to a quivering pile of fear. But Ning's eyes only reddened further. Ignoring all else, he barked out. Young Flame Nong! Ji Ning! Nine Lotus realized that Young Flame Nong's eyes had a hint of a murderous intent in them, and she immediately barked out towards Ning. Ning looked at Nine Lotus, then said coldly, Nine Lotus, there's no need for you to pay any heed to this young master of the Young Flame clan. Hmph. He's not even the god Plung Duke yet. When we first followed him into the immortal estate, he was so mild and humble. But not that we are useless to him, this is how he acts. You are courting death. Young Flame Nong's anger was beginning to build. Previously, Ning was a useful assistant, but he was now useless. Geniuses like him. They weren't much in the eyes of him, Young Flame Gnome. Ning said angrily. Do you remember our original agreement? You made us promises in the name of your Young Flame clan. What, now that you have the immortal estate, you are planning to act against us? Are you feeling greedy for the treasures we acquired in the immortal estate? You endured it then, but are now planning to act against us? Be silent! Nine Lotus cried out. Nine Lotus. Ning was utterly infuriated. Sit down! Nine Lotus shouted at him, while also sending him a frantic mental message. Ji Ning, you are too rash. Think about Young Flame Nong's status. He's normally in the Imperial Capital, and when together with the Imperial Princes and various young ducklings, they often act in dissolute, wanton ways. I just have to deal with it, and drink a few cups of wine with him, and this matter will be at an end. If you let anger cloud your mind, then it will be trouble. Ning sent back. Some things I can endure, but others I cannot. Nine Lotus. Are you trying to get yourself killed? You want to fight him? Nine Lotus sent furiously. Don't be so immature. Ning was stunned. Immature? Young Flame Nong was naturally watching the mental argument between Nine Lotus and Ning. It seems as though this young and famous Ji Ning doesn't live up to his reputation. Young Flame Nong sent mentally to the fiend god by his side, Xiang Liu Fang. A scene like this has already angered him to the point of insanity. To deal with him would be simplicity itself. For now, however, there's no rush to deal with him. If I kill him within the immortal estate, once the news of it is spread out by the Dongyan clan, the other large tribes will all think of me, Young Flame Nong, as a narrow-minded man. Right. Xiang Liu Fang concurred. Nine Lotus words had truly enraged Ning now. Who was Nine Lotus? She was the next leader of the Dongyan clan. There was absolutely no need for her to compromise in such a manner. Since there was no need, why did she do so? Young Master Young Flame, Ji Ning is still young, please pardon him. Nine Lotus smiled towards Young Flame Nong. Young Flame Nong didn't continue with his earlier actions. He could tell that if he went just a bit farther, this Ji Ning probably would actually start to a fight to the death against him. He dared to kill Ji Ning, but Nine Lotus? Nine Lotus was the next leader of the Dong Yan clan. If he killed her, he would be in serious trouble. Nine Lotus quickly returned to Ning's side and sat down. Ning remained seated in the lotus position on his chair. Sifu disciple servants removed the shattered magic treasure table in front of him, replacing it with a new one. Ji Ning! As soon as Nine Lotus returned to her seat, she immediately spoke mentally to Ning. Calm down. Oh, so you know I'm pissed? Ning looked towards Anina Lotus. This really was nothing. This was a small matter. 
If in the future you were to see how the young masters of the major clans act when they are together, you'll understand that this sort of minor flirtation, it really means nothing. Generally speaking, everyone has a bottom line that they won't cross. To engage in a little playing around is nothing. Nine Lotus Scent You've seen too little, which is why you were so easily enraged. Look over there. After drinking a cup of wine, young Flame Nong is no longer harping on this matter. I've seen too little? Ning sent back with a shout. Bottom line? Nine Lotus, you are my Tao companion. This so-called a little playing around of yours, being embraced by others' men, being teased by them, drinking with them, these thines have already gone beyond my bottom line. Do you understand? You, how can you act this way? Nai Lotus was furious as well. That's the way I am. Can it be that you didn't know? Ning stared at her. Nai Lotus and Ning's gazes intersected. She could sense the determination and resolve from Ning's eyes. Fine. I won't be act like this in the future. Nai Lotus lowered her head. Ning lowered his head as well, beginning to drink. Although Nine Lotus had bowed her head to him, Ning still felt as though there were thorns stuck in his heart. Just now, he truly hoped that Nine Lotus would directly refuse Young Flame Known. Even if she didn't throw the cup of wine into Young Flame Known's face, she had to at least turn and immediately leave. In this recent period of time, the two had already argued twice due to differences in the way they behaved towards others. This time, their fight was due to the fact that they handled matters and conducted themselves in completely different ways. He. He. He he. Young Flame Gnome, seated at the front of the hall, was able to tell that there was some unhappiness between Ji Ning and Nine Lotus. He actually laughed, and then his gaze fell towards the nearby Rainbow Flame Fairy, Yue. The flames in his heart blazed even hotter. The desire he felt towards Yue was far stronger than the desire he felt towards Nine Lotus. Chapter 23 Windwing Evasion Quite a few thoughts were going through Young Flame Known's mind. At the same time, the other members of the Black White College began to console Ji Ning. Junior Apprentice Brother, endure it. Adept Vast River sent to Ning. After we leave the Witch River Immortal Estate, you won't have to stay here and swallow Young Flame Known's attitude. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning. Yu Wei sent worried. We aren't able to beat Young Flame Known right now. However, Truly powerful immortal cultivators rely on themselves. No matter what how impressive he might be, in the future, Young Flame Known will only be the God Plume Duke, whereas the real powers behind the Young Flame Clan are those old fellows who have lived for countless years. When you train to the celestial immortal level in the future, the Young Flame Clan will treat you with courtesy, not daring to slacken off in the slightest. What would a God Plume Duke be to you? He's nothing more than a titular leader. Ning gave you away a look. He had met with the Lord of Chui Manor and Granny Mei, and had watched as a great power had assaulted the six paths of reincarnation. His master, Dao's Three Lives, was one of the most incredible figures of the Three Realms. It really was as she had said. Personal strength was the truest foundation to power. If Ning were to also become a major power of the Three Realms, what would a mere young flame clan, one of the clans subordinate to the Grand Xia Dynasty's major world, be to him? There were three thousand major worlds. As long as he was able to reach the celestial and mortal level, the Young Flame clan would be respectful to him. After all, it was rare for there to be even a single celestial immortal for every ten thousand loose immortals. Celestial immortals were true immortals, who had escaped the binds of the three realms and lived carefree lives. Senior Apprentice Brother, North Sun sent to him. If you aren't happy with senior apprentice sister Nilotus, then as I see it, you should just break up. I mean, I'm just saying, it's up to you, and how you really feel. You need to ask yourself if you truly want for senior apprentice sister Nilotus to be your Tao companion. Ning gave North Sun a glance. Junior apprentice brother, no need to say anything further. In his heart, Ning truly did like Nilotus. In his past life and in this life, Ning had never been in a romantic relationship. He couldn't quite explain how he felt towards her, but he truly did feel a hazy liking for her. However, these recent arguments had caused Ning to truly feel upset. Glug glug glug. Ning held his cup, constantly drinking wine. Although he downed one cup after another, all of the wine continued to be burnt away by flames after it entered his body. Nine Lotus sat there in the lotus position, 
staring at the constantly drinking Ning. It seems Ji Ning is really angry. Nine Lotus felt frustrated as well. How can Ji Ning act like this? I lowered my head to him, and this wasn't even a big deal to begin with. This sort of thing is too common. I just had to deal with it in a casual, superficial manner. Why does he have to be so angry about it? If he gets angry at this and angry at that, in the future, after I become the leader of the Dongyan clan, am I supposed to follow his every wish and desire? I'll let him calm down and sober up first. He should understand later. One had been held up high since childhood, and had been chosen to be the next leader of a major clan. The other came from a world of peace in his past life, and was a genius who had been born into a backwater clan in this life. The two of them attracted each other. When they had been in the secluded peach garden utopia of Serpentwing Lake, there had been no problems. But once they truly began to face worldly affairs together, their disagreements had begun to constantly worsen. Ning and Nine Lotus were both feeling rather frustrated in their hearts. Suddenly, boom, 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 a figure carrying a terrifying, tremendous force came charging in. Those Zifu death sworn that had been stationed in the outer perimeter instantly blew apart, their bodies being knocked flying and blood spraying everywhere. In the blink of an eye, the entire hall was transformed into an azure's hell, the floor stained with blood and chunks of meat. The golem, young flame gnome, seated at the front of the hall, was greatly surprised, but then he immediately grew excited and eager. One golem after another charged in. As for Ji Ning and the others, as they had been assigned to sit down at various locations in the table, they weren't able to assemble into formation. That dog hit young flame gnome. He said that those Zifu death sworn would be able to hold on for a few moments, but in reality, they weren't able to do so at all. Ning's Dark North swords appeared in his hands as he hurriedly blocked the Cheongchi Manticore Golem which was pouncing towards him. Boom! Ning's sword light flashed out, crashing against the body of the Cheongchi Golem and sending it flying away. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, protect Junior Apprentice Brother Mu North Sun. Adept Vast River sent. I know, don't worry. Ning said hurriedly. This hall was simply too large. Ning's group had been divided into two rows that sat on each end of the table. Nai Lotus, Vast River, and Yu Wei were on the side opposite to Ning, and were quite far from each other as well. As for Ning, North Sun, and Shui Hongi, they were on the same side. Right now, six Cheongchi golems were throwing themselves against Ning and the rest of the six Wunxiang adepts. Even more of the golems were charging towards Young Flame Nong, it was very easy for Ning to handle a single Cheongchi Golem, but clearly it was a bit difficult for North Sun. North Sun was more talented in controlling Golems, not at close combat. Swoosh. A pair of black wings appeared on Ning's back, and the wings fluttered as he began to execute the Windwing evasion, howling through the air as he moved next to North Sun. His sword light flashed out, striking against the primal level Cheongchi Golem and sending it flying. Thank you, senior apprentice brother. North Sun was covered with cold sweat, and he hurriedly controlled a giant silver serpent construct, sending it into battle. It's nothing. Ning laughed, twin swords in hands, and then lotus petals began to bloom around him, easily blocking those two Cheongchi golems. Ning and the others, including Shui Hongi, were each dealing with a single Cheongchi golem. In truth, these six golems weren't meant to kill them, they were assigned to keep them tied down. The other twelve Cheongchi golems and their black armored leader simultaneously charged towards Young Flame Nong. Ha! Young Flame Nong laughed loudly. Capture them. Xiang Liu Fang's twin hands struck out, and those massive hands seemed to cover the skies as they did so. His fingers transformed into massive serpents, which seemed to coil about as they moved to wrap around the Cheongchi golems. In fact, some of them managed to snare two Cheongchi golems each. All twelve of them were actually seized by his giant hands, but the black armored man pulled out a long sword from within his leg with his right arm, hacking it directly against Xiang Liufang's hands. Boom! The surrounding area was filled with a deafening explosion. Actually, it was quite taxing for Xiang Liufang to rely on nothing but a pair of hands to capture those twelve Cheongchi golems. The power of this sword attack was even more tremendous. His hands trembled and were knocked aside allowing the Cheongchi golems to all escape their captor. Eh? Xiang Liu Fang was shocked. 
This sword of yours. Chop. The black armored man transformed into a streak of light, charging forwards and slamming the sword down towards Xiang Liu Fang once more. Right at this moment, the other twelve Qiongqi golems howled through the air, flying towards Young Flame Gnome. Young Flame Gnome frowned, and instantly that enormous red scale salamander appeared around him. At the same time, a leaf like Dao Seal appeared in his hand. They are rather irritating. Young Flame Gnome muttered softly, but he felt completely confident. He had Uncle Fang, the Red Scale Salamander, and a protective treasure. He was definitely going to win. Growl. The Red Scale Salamander howled with rage as it fought against the Cheongchi Golems. But suddenly, a Cheongchi Golem reached out to snatch the nearby bronze lamp, then began to run away with E.T. The bronze lamp! Young Flame Gnome was shocked. Now, he understood. These golems weren't meant to kill him. They knew that they weren't strong enough to do that. Thus, their real target was the bronze lamp. To bind a treasure, one had to be right next to it and slowly use one's elemental key to bind it. If one was a bit too far away, or if someone else took possession of it, then there would be no way for one to fill it with elemental key. Naturally, then, there would be no way to bind it. This would result in it taking forever for him to control the immortal estate. Given how well these golems knew the Witch River Palace, they could simply play hide-and-seek with him within it. The golems could delay for thousands of years, but he could not. Quick, seize the bronze lamp! Young Flame Known howled furiously. Xiang Liu Fan immediately let out an astonishing howl as well. His right arm suddenly split apart and flew out from his body. His severed right arm blasted out with a sky-filling black-colored divine power, which rippled forth, then transformed the right arm into a new Xiang Liu Fan. As for the original Xiang Liu Fan, he grew out a new arm. In the blink of an eye, two Xiang Liu Fangs had appeared within the main hall. However, by the time this splitting process had completed, that Qiongqi Golem had already charged out of the main hall. After all, primal level Qiongqi Golems were indeed as fast as lightning. One Xiang Liu Fang remained in combat against the black armored man. The other, however, went chasing after the Qiongqi Golem that had fled with the bronze lamp. With a swoosh, he charged into the corridor, continuing his pursuit. Two Xiang Liu Fangs? A clone? Ning and the others were all shocked. The bronze lamp, the bronze lamp. Damn them, damn them. Young Flame Known bellowed with rage. But right at this moment, at a distant corridor within the hall, Xiang Liu Fang suddenly reappeared, bronze lamp in one hand, sack in the other. Ha! Young Flame Known instantly laughed. As for the black armored man, he immediately felt disappointed. He knew that the difference in power between himself and these invading humans was simply too great. Thus, he had hoped to catch them off guard and seize the bronze lamp. Unfortunately, this fiend god was truly too powerful. The fiend god was able to tie him down with one body, then use another one to chase after the Cheongchi Golem and bring the bronze lamp back. The overall situation has been cast in stone. Young Flame Knowing immediately felt completely relaxed, watching the battle going on in the rest of the hall with leisure. But as he did so, his face suddenly changed. He was looking at Ning and North Sun, located far away from him. Ning was wielding two Dark North swords, and on his back was a pair of black wings. He was effortlessly blocking two Cheongchi golems. Wings? Young Flame Known carefully watched the way in which Ning moved. At the same time, he sent mentally to Xiang Liu Fang. Uncle Fang, look at Ji Ning. Xiang Liu Fang's two bodies had merged into one again. Fighting at full power once more, Xiang Liu Fang stuffed the black armored man into his sack. Upon hearing Young Flame Known's words, he immediately turned to look. Upon doing so, his face changed as well. Uncle Fang, that's the Wind Wing evasion. I'm not mistaken, am I? Young Flame Known asked. Wind Wing evasion. Young Flame Known himself had never trained in it, but he had watched his clansmen train in it repeatedly. Because of how often he had seen it, and because he had personally read the contents of the Wind Wing Evasion manual, he could see traces of it in the way Ning moved. Right. That's the Wind Wing Evasion. I've trained in it before. Although Ji Ning is using wings to mask it, he is definitely using the Wind Wing Evasion. Xiang Liu Fang sent mentally. In the past, the descendants of the Yuchi clan also used wings to hide it, 
Ji Ning is using the same old trick. Although this is a rather clumsy method, unless one has an extremely deep understanding of the Wind Wing evasion, there's no way one would be able to tell. Young Flame Nong sent mentally. Uncle Fong, how could Ji Ning know the Wind Wing evasion? It should be one of the surviving spawns of the Yuchi clan. Xiang Liu Fang sent back. Chapter 24, Enmity Born from Genocide Surviving spawns of the Yuchi clan? Young Flame Nong began to feel a killing intent in his heart. Not a single member of the Yuchi clan is to be spared, and those members of the Yuchi clan who have trained in the Windwing evasion are all the more deserving of death. The Windwing evasion, only my Young Flame clan can have it. It cannot be learned by others. The secret arts and divine abilities which were unique to a certain major clan were absolutely forbidden to be taught to others. Any outsiders who learned these techniques would suffer pursuit and assault. Uncle Fong, let's deal with these golems first. Young Flame Nong had no desire to play around anymore at all. For the first time, he truly had the desire to kill Ji Ning. Whoosh. Whoosh. Xiang Liu Fang's two large hands swished through the air, snatching away at the Cheongchi golems with abandon while shouting. Everyone, stop these Cheongchi golems. Don't let them escape. If they escape, they'll cause problems in the future. While saying this, he continually captured Cheongchi golems and stuffed them into his sack. Everyone did their best to stop the Cheongchi golems from escaping, allowing Xiang Liu Fang to capture them, one by one. They really were suicidal. The black wings on Ning's back disappeared. He gave a glance to the blood-stained corpses on the ground. Although those Zifu disciples were all death-sworn and were able to assemble into formation, the difference between them and golems at the primal level of power was simply too vast. The first wave of assaults from the Cheongchi Manticore golems had caused virtually all of the Zifu disciples to be wiped out, leaving behind only ten or so. How pitiable! They were Zifu disciples, but against these golems, they were completely useless. And yet, Young Flame Nong insisted on having them watch the perimeter. Clearly, he didn't give a damn about them dying. Mu North Sun sent with a mental sigh. Young Flame Nong truly is cold-blooded. These deaths one had been voluntarily gifted by North Mount Yin and some others. To Young Flame Nong, however, these deaths one had been raised by outside clans, and there was no way the Young Flame clan would truly trust them. There was no point to him bringing him back. And yet, he couldn't just return them back to North Madin. Thus, he might as well let them die. If some were lucky enough to survive, then that meant that they had been blessed with good fortune and might be worthy of bringing back to the clan and training. The few lucky Zifu disciple survivors hurriedly began to clean the hall, completely removing all of the corpses and bloodstains and restoring it to a pristine condition. Young Flame Nong reseated himself at the front of the hall. His gaze cold, he stared directly at Ning, then barked. Ji Ning! Everyone in the hall was stunned. North Sun, Yue, Nine Lotus, Adept Vast River, and Shui Hongi were all astonished. They could sense that there was a terrifying look in Young Flame Nong's eyes, and the cold, tyrannical way he had just shouted was something they could all sense. Not even earlier, when Ning had shattered the table, had Young Flame Nong been so formal and cold. Young Master Young Flame! Ning looked towards Young Flame Nong. What is it? Speak. Young Flame Nong. This time, it was Nine Lotus, seated on the other side, who grew angry. Ji Ning is my Dao companion. Earlier, he offended you, but that was just a minor matter. For you to act this way, you are being a bit too narrow-minded. Although these young masters and princes of major clans often chatted and teased each other, there were some bottom lines that could not be crossed. Ji Ning was her Dao companion after all, and he had also helped Young Flame Nong this time. It was one thing for the two of them to have had a bit of friction earlier, but for Young Flame Nong to act this way now was going too far. Nine Lotus, you'll understand after hearing what I say, Young Flame Nong said coldly. Then I shall listen attentively, Nine Lotus said with cold anger as well. Ji Ning, I ask you this. Young Flame Nong looked at Ning. Just now, was the divine ability you displayed the Windwing Evasion? Ning was stunned. Windwing evasion? How did Young Flame Nong know about the Windwing evasion? Ning's mother's clan, the Yuchi clan, had been almost completely obliterated. Most likely, the only remaining member was Ning's uncle's daughter, and Ning didn't even know if she was still alive. 
Ning could be somewhat considered a descendant of the Yuchi clan, but the Yuchi clan was extremely secretive about the Windwing evasion to begin with. No need to deny it. You used the Windwing evasion, young flame Nong said with a cold laugh. Uncle Fang, display it for him. Whoosh. Xiang Liu Fang suddenly disappeared from young flame Nong's side. He seemed to have transformed into a giant rock, instantly appearing in the center of the main hall. Then, with another movement, he retreated and returned to young flame Nong's side. Ning, seeing this, felt his heart tremble. His other fellow disciples of the Black White College couldn't tell, but he himself, as a practitioner of the Windwing Evasion, could, Xiang Liu Fang truly was using the Windwing Evasion. In addition, it was even more precise and profound than Ning's own usage. But this made sense. After all, Ning was only a fiend god body refiner. Compared to Xiang Liu Fang, a true fiend god, he was still far inferior. They are the culprits. They are the ones who annihilated my clan. A thought suddenly entered Ning's mind. Can it be that it was the Young Flame clan which annihilated my mother's Yuchi clan? Can it be that the grandparents and aunts and uncles who I never met were all slain by the Young Flame clan? Well, Young Flame Nong looked at Ning. Is it the same as yours? I do indeed train in the Windwing evasion. Ning knew that there was no point in lying. Frowning, he said. But so what if it is? Nine Lotus, Yuei, Adept Vast River and North Sun all sued there, watching nervously but not rushing to speak. Young Flame Known laughed loudly. The Windwing Evasion technique was originally unique to the Yuchi clan of the East-style commandery of our Grand Xia dynasty. Ning, hearing this, felt his heart shake. The Yuchi clan had possessed this divine ability for a long, long time, however, they relied on using wing-type magic treasures to hide it. Our Young Flame clan, however, found out about it long ago. After preparing for an extremely long period of time, we annihilated the entire Yuchi clan in one blow, but were unable to find the original manual of the Windwing Evasion. Some of the powerful immortals of my young flame clan personally intervened and used the Soul Scour technique to collect enough memories from members of the Yuchi clan to completely rebuild the Windwing Evasion manual from scratch. Young Flame Nong looked at Ning. Right now, the Windwing Evasion is unique to my young flame clan and it is absolutely forbidden to teach it to others. For you to learn the Windwing Evasion without the permission of my young flame clan, this, in and of itself, merits the death penalty for you. What's more, I suspect that you are one of the surviving spawn of the Yuchi clan. Speak! Are you a surviving spawn of the Yuchi clan? Young flame Nong stared at Ning. Everyone else now completely understood. So this was what it was all about. Warfare between clans. There was no real right or wrong in interclan warfare. Since the Young Flame clan had annihilated the Yuchi clan, and the Yuchi clan's windwing evasion technique was now solely possessed by the Young Flame clan, from the Young Flame clan's standpoint, it was true that all descendants of the Yuchi clan had to be annihilated. After all, between the two clans, there was now a grudge that stemmed from clan genocide. Ji Ning. Nine Lotus sent to Ning, saying frantically, no matter what, don't admit that you are a descendant of the Yuchi clan. If you admit to it, given that there is hatred that stems from clan genocide between you and the Young Flame clan, the Young Flame clan will definitely not permit you to remain alive. You only need to say that you acquired the original copy of the Windwing Evasion manual through happenstance, and that without knowing the full backstory, you learned it. Thus, since you didn't know it was forbidden to learn it, you cannot be blamed. I will have my Dongyan clan engage in negotiation with the Young Flame clan on your behalf, and this matter will quickly come to an end. Ning looked towards Young Flame Nong and Xiang Liu Fang. His heart was filled with boundless rage. The immortals of the Young Flame clan had soul scoured the souls of many Yuchi clansmen in order to remake a complete windwing evasion. Upon being soul scoured, one's soul would generally be dispersed and destroyed. Damn. 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 Ning truly wanted to take revenge for his mother's entire clan. Are you the surviving spawn of the Yuchi clan? Young Flame Nong stared at Ning, his murderous intent billowing to the heavens. Previously, during the banquet, he had just been flirting a bit with Nine Lotus. He hadn't truly felt any desire to kill Ning. After all, he had to protect the Young Flame clan's face and reputation. However, if Ning truly was a spawn of the Yuchi clan, 
then even the patriarchs of the young flame clan were present, they would still mercilessly kill Ning. In this moment, he was the representative of the entire young flame clan. I am not. Ning stared at young flame Nong and Xiang Liu Fang. He forcibly repressed his anger and said in a low voice, Young flame Nong, if you want to kill me, there's no need for you to put on such a show to find an excuse. My senior apprentice brother has already spoken. There is no relationship between himself and the Yuchi clan. North Sun said angrily. Young master Young Flame, we came here to help you. Is this how you are going to treat us? Young master Young Flame, since my junior apprentice brother Ji Ning has said that he is not a descendant of the Yuchi clan, that means he is not. He most likely acquired this divine ability through a fortuitous encounter. He can negotiate with your Young Flame clan and offer some compensatory gifts then swear an oath to the Tao of the Heavens that he absolutely will not pass this divine ability out o to anyone else. Adept Vast River said. Yue spoke out as well. Young Master Young Flame, for you to claim at a time like this that Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning is a descendant of the Yuchi clan, once word of this spreads people will think that it is you, Young Flame Nong, who intentionally sought out an excuse to act against him. Young Flame Nong. Nai Lotus stared at Young Flame Nong as well. Filled with wrath, she said, Ji Ning is my Dao companion. Everyone was standing out, pressuring young flame Nong from all sides. But he only laughed. Ha ha, don't worry, young flame Nong said with a laugh. Since Ji Ning has accompanied me on this trip through the immortal estate, I'll give him a chance to live. As he spoke out, he produced a set of black manacles, covered with ancient golden runes. He tossed the manacles directly towards Ning. Clank. They landed on the ground before him. These are godlock chains. Young Flame Nong looked towards Ning. Upon being manacled, you'll be like an ordinary mortal. Even fiend gods, when locked by these chains, won't be able to resist. Put these chains on and wait for my orders. I can swear an oath as well. So long as you are not a spawn of the Yuchi clan, I absolutely will not kill you, nor harm your power. I will go out and engage in an investigation. If, however, I can verify that you are a spawn of the Yuchi clan, I will kill you. If you are not, I'll release you to your freedom. Ning furrowed his brows. Yue spoke out in a high voice. Young master Young Flame, think about how powerful your Young Flame clan is. Is it necessary for you to act in such a petty manner? You can let junior apprentice brother Ji Ning go free for now, then engage in your investigations. Upon verifying the results, you can act against him later. Can it be that in the face of the power of your young flame clan, junior apprentice brother Ji Ning would be able to escape your reach? Ji Ning, do you agree or not? Young flame Nong looked at Ning. I've given you your only way out. Ning stared at young flame Nong. You want me to chain myself and hand over my life to you? Do you think this is possible? Young flame Nong's face instantly turned even colder and more sinister. No matter what, Ning would not voluntarily put the god lock chains around himself. But right at this moment, Young Master Young Flame! The nearby Shui Hongi suddenly laughed coldly as he pointed at Ning. Don't listen to his lies. This Ji Ning's father was known as Ji Chuan, while his mother was known as Yuchi Snow. You learned the Windwing Evasion, and your mother was Yuchi Snow? Young Flame Nong instantly revealed a savage look on his face, and his voice became as cold as ice. So you truly are the spawn of the Yuchi clan. Die. Ji Ning shall die. Anyone who attempts to block the path of the Young Flame clan in doing so will be killed, without reservation. Chapter 25, Grand Dao Domain Everyone close to Ji Ning, such as Moon North Sun and Nine Lotus, all knew that Ning's mother was named Yuchi Snow. However, they all wanted to try and buy him some time. At the very least, they wanted to make sure that could leave this major world alive. Later on, the Dongyan clan and the Black-White College could use some methods at their disposal to ensure that Ning could be sent and escape to other lesser worlds, or perhaps even a different major world. Unfortunately, Shui Hongi had thoroughly investigated Ning long ago, and had even purchased a set of intelligence reports regarding Ning from the Heavenly Treasures Mountain. Naturally, he knew who Ning's parents were. Young Flame no! Nai Lotus was enraged. Hold! Yue's forehead suddenly began to glow with white light. Her aura quickly became terrifying as she, too, roared with fury. 
Adept Vast River and Mu North Sun all called out in anger as well. Whoosh. Xiang Liu Fang only stretched out a single hand, which instantly expanded to a tremendous size. At the same time, his five fingers transformed into five giant serpents, each more than 300 meters long. They stretched out towards Nine Lotus, Yue, North Sun, and Adept Vast River. Every single serpent emanated a terrifyingly powerful aura, causing the faces of Nai Lotus and the others to become unsightly. Nai Lotus, I won't kill you! Young Flame Known pointed towards Nai Lotus. But those three fellow disciples of yours, Uncle Fang, if they dare interfere, just kill them. Although he felt lust towards Yu Wei, women, to Young Flame Known, were nothing more than playthings. Playthings, in the end, were still playthings. They could be killed at a moment's notice. You. Young Flame Known. Nine Lotus, North Sun, Yu Wei, and Adept Vast River all stared towards him with hatred, but they knew exactly how strong Xiang Liu Fang was. He was absolutely capable of crushing them. Although they had some protective items on them, those items would at most allow them to stay alive for a short period of time. To completely change the situation was impossible. Senior Apprentice Brother, Senior Apprentice Sister, Junior Apprentice Brother, Nine Lotus. Ning looked towards Young Flame Gnome, seated at the front of the hall, then said calmly, There's no need for you to intervene. This is a matter between myself and Young Flame Gnome. Ji Ning! Nine Lotus called out frantically towards him. Ning looked towards Nine Lotus. Don't worry. Young Flame Gnome! Nine Lotus was absolutely livid. You are provoking my Dong Yen clan. If it was the forefather of the Dong Yen clan who said these words to me, then I might truly be forced to reconsider. But you? Young Flame Gnome laughed, then shook his head. Nai Lotus suddenly produced a black lotus petal in her hand, a petal with an aura that inspired terror. The black lotus petal quickly expanded, causing Xiang Liu Fang to call out icily. Are you looking to die? His giant python finger instantly smashed headlong against the black lotus flower, which trembled, then began to crack. This cracked black lotus flower continued to fly straight towards the giant serpent. Boom! The giant serpent quickly froze into a statue of ice, then shattered apart. In fact, Xiang Liu Fang's entire hand became frozen, all the way to his elbow, then began to splinter across. However, Xiang Liu Fang's arm then once more grew out. Wap. His fingers once more transformed into serpents, striking heavily against Nai Lotus and causing her to be knocked flying, vomiting blood from her mouth. Not bad. Unfortunately, you were only capable of injuring Uncle Fang. Young Flame Nong shook his head. Even I am unable to produce treasures capable of killing Uncle Fang. You. Xiang Liu Fang was of the ancient fiend god Hydriga race. His life force was incredibly powerful and his combat ability was comparable to a peak loose immortals. To kill Xiang Liu Fang? This was an incredibly hard task. Shui Hongi, I'll give you a chance to render merits for yourself. Young Flame Nong looked towards Shui Hongi. Go and kill Ji Ning. Me? Kill Ji Ning? Shui Hongi was stunned. Are you going to kill him or not? Young Flame Nong's eyes flashed with a cold light. Shui Hongi mentally cursed nonstop. He had been flattering Young Flame Nong this entire time, and had even told him that Ning's mother was named Yuchi Snow. He had done all of this in the hopes of making Young Flame Nong like him, but who would have imagined that Young Flame Nong would be this vicious? Young Flame Nong had actually ordered him to go kill Ji Ning, he had no confidence in being able to do so at all. Kill yes kill! Shui Hongi nodded frantically, but in his heart, he thought to himself. I'm not going to be able to kill Ji Ning but I should be able to stay alive at least. Ji Ning, prepare to die. Shui Hongi called out with anger, then instantly shot out a series of flying needles towards Ning. Young Flame Nong and Xiang Liu Fang stood there at the front of the hall, watching this happen. A look of anticipation was in Young Flame Nong's eyes. Shui Hongi's strength should be a bit weaker than Ji Ning's. If Ji Ning really was to go all out against him, he should be able to kill Shui Hongi, and after Shui Hongi dies, his immortal ranked magic treasure will be mine. Uncle Fang, after Shui Hongi dies, you attack and kill Ji Ning. Young Flame Nong sent. The immortal ranked magic treasure will be mine then. Yes, young master, Xiang Liu Fang said. 
upon hearing young flame Nong say the words, Ji Ning shall die, and anyone who attempts to block the path of the young flame clan in doing so will be killed. Ning had already made up his mind to kill young flame Nong. Xiang Liu Fang was far too powerful. Ning didn't feel any confidence in his ability to defeat him, but he had no choice now. Die. Xue Hongi charged forward. First you. Then young flame Nong. Ning wielded his Dark North swords in his hands. At this point, he couldn't be bothered to use wings to hide his technique. Hush. A series of flying needles filled the skies, shooting towards him. Kill! Ning let out an enraged bellow. In this moment, Ning's sword heart was more steadfast and firm than it had ever been before. He understood now. In this moment, he had embarked on a brand new path. If he didn't kill Young Flame Gnome, then due to being physically located within this immortal estate, he wouldn't be able to escape. He would die. But if he did kill Young Flame Gnome, someone who had the highest chances to become the next god Plume Duke, the Young Flame clan would definitely pursue him with full power. This was a clan that was even more terrifyingly powerful than the Northmont clan of Stillwater. Two roads lay ahead of him. One was the road to death. The other was the road of being pursued by the Young Flame clan. After having been pressured to this extent, Ning actually became incomparably resolved. Boom! His soul became completely pure and transparent in this moment, more than it ever had been before. Ning suddenly felt as though time itself slowed down. Something that he had been strugglingly this entire time to reach, and yet had never been able to, finally, he truly had reached it, and embarked on a new journey through his Grand Dao. This was, the Grand Dao of the Sword. A vast, awe-inspiring Grand Dao. In this moment, Ning felt as though he had transformed into a sword that was swimming through the entirety of the Grand Dao. In this moment, Ning had completely reached the Grand Dao domain level. Generally speaking, immortal cultivators who trained in a Dao all had the chance to reach the Dao domain level, but that was generally only true for an ordinary Dao. The Dao of the Sword, however, was one of the Grand Daos. To reach the Grand Dao domain was far more difficult than even completely mastering an entire Dao path. Although Ning had reached the fifth stance of the three-foot sword long ago, if he hadn't been placed under such enormous pressure this time, causing his heart to suddenly and completely comprehend and allow him to pass through the final barriers, it would have remained very difficult for him to reach this new level. Within his sea of consciousness, Ning's soul suddenly transformed into a sword, an incomparably dazzling sword. This was the sword soul, which only a sword immortal who had truly reached the Grand Dao domain level would possess. This was a fundamental change, an evolution of the soul. Whoosh. The sword suddenly transformed into Ji Ning's appearance, but the spirit Ning faintly emanated with the light of a sword. What is the purpose of a life lived? All I ask for is to be joyful. Kill, kill, kill. Exterminate all injustices. Exterminate all those who deserve killing. Only then will I be exultant. As loose immortals, there is no path to immortality. Thus, better to live passionately for a day, than to live a century while stifled. My sword is the joyous sword, the sword of passion, the sword which exterminates all injustices. The name of this sword technique is the Three-Foot Sword. While battling against Shui Hongi, Ning suddenly began to laugh. Laugh loudly, and with joy. Kill, 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 exterminate all eye justices, and exterminate all those who need killing. Better to live passionately for a day, than to live a century while stifled. As Ning laughed loudly, the Dark North swords in his hands suddenly became incomparably brilliant and incomparably awe-inspiring. Swish. An unfathomably terrifying sword aura instantly filled the entire hall. A dazzling streak of sword light lashed out, tearing through the flying needles as though they were made of rotting wood then sliced across Shui Hongi's body. I Shui Hongi's eyes were completely round. He had never imagined that he would end up like this. Filled to the brim with terror, even his soul began to crack and shatter under the terrifying sword aura filling the hall. And then, his body fell into two parts on the ground. The sixth stance of the three-foot sword, the Grand Dao Domain. The three-foot sword, as the highest level sword art of the Black White College, had six stances that were available to the public. 
The final three stances, however, were limited to direct, epical transmission for sword immortals. The first stance, Lustrous Sword Heart. The second stance, Manifold Thistlethorns. The third stance, Sudden Sword Light. The fourth stance, Sun in the Sky. The fifth stance, Moonlight Hiding the Sword. The sixth stance, Grand Dao Domain. These sword stances weren't completely set in stone. For example, the first stance, Lustrous Sword Heart, was different for each person, depending on how they comprehended it. The three-foot sword primarily served as a guide. It guided sword immortals towards techniques that suited them best. Every single practitioner of the three-foot sword was capable of executing the three-foot sword in a way which suited them the most. In dire straits, Ning's heart had completely merged into the Grand Dao, allowing him to reach the Grand Dao domain level. The power of this sixth stance he had comprehended was truly incomparably frightening. Is this a Grand Dao domain? Young Flame Known watched as a terrifying sword aura washed over the entire hall, causing even his own soul to shudder. Young Flame Known's face completely changed from its previous, calm and smug look. He stared at Ji Ning, this young man from a backwater clan, who seemed to have gone berserk and who had just killed Shui Hongi with one blow. How old is he? He actually, actually has already reached the Grand Dao domain level? And in the Dao of the Sword, the most offensive of Das? Young Flame Noong suddenly felt jealousy in his heart. Why couldn't he be this talented? Why did this sort of talent had to fall onto a rustic youth like this one? Grand Dao Domain? This Dao of the Sword. Yue, Adept Vast River, and Nai Lotus were in a state of shock. The sword aura that filled the hall, all of them could feel the resoluteness, the sharpness, the indomitableness emanating from it. The sword was a sharp weapon. The heart of a sword immortal, only one whose heart was truly as sharp, resolute, and indomitable as a sword would be capable of truly comprehending the exquisiteness of the Tao of the sword. When the sword emerged, there was no room for regret. When the sword emerged, it could not be blocked. This was what it meant to be a sword immortal. Kill! Ning wielded his twin swords in his hands. His body suddenly increased dramatically as he transformed into a 30-meter-tall giant as he simultaneously executed his divine ability, star-seizing hand, as well. In this moment, the sword light in Ning's hands had reached an awe-inspiringly powerful level. But Xiang Liu Fang just let out a furious growl, smashing out with his palm, which swept forward like a dark storm cloud as the giant serpents that were his fingers ravenously bit down. Boom! An explosive sound rang out. The flesh on Xiong Liu Fang's serpent hand split open, and fresh blood sprayed everywhere as divine power lashed everywhere. Ning was sent flying back as well, blood spewing out from his mouth. In this moment, Ning understood that although his power had increased dramatically, compared with Xiong Liu Fang, who possessed the power of a peak loose immortal, the difference in power was simply too great. The opponent was able to defeat him with just one hand. Ji Ning! Senior Apprentice Brother! North Sun Yue and Nine Lotus all called out in alarm. While being knocked backwards, Ning's eyes became filled with madness. That black loop, which had been tucked into his bracer the entire time, suddenly appeared in his palm. This was the treasure which Dao's three lives had personally forged. Of Ning's two important life-saving treasures, it was the only one capable of an active attack. Ning had no other choices left to him. Go! Ning waved his hand, sending the black loop flying out. This is a seven English podcast, and you're listening to an adventure fantasy novel. The Desolate Era Book 10, Entering the Immortal Estate Chapter 26, Killing Young Flame Gnome The black loop seemed quite ordinary, but as Xiang Liu Fang struck out with his massive, dark, cloud-like hand, with those giant, serpentine fingers, the black loop actually passed straight through it. The giant fiend god's hand wasn't harmed at all. It was as though the black loop was composed of a different type of force, as though it was illusory. It passed straight through. What's this? Xiang Liu Fang was completely flabbergasted. Kill him. Young Flame Nong's eyes were filled with a murderous intent as well, but then, he too stared in amazement at the black loop which had appeared. A seemingly ordinary black loop, but it caused both Young Flame Nong and Xiang Liu Fang to feel nervousness. 
because they had no idea what sort of a treasure it was. One of them was an ancient fiend god with vast experience. The other was all but guaranteed to be the next god Plume Duke, who similarly had seen many things. The two of them had seen countless treasures, but they had never seen a treasure like this before. In fact, they couldn't even tell what it was. This black loop easily passed through Xiang Liu Fang's massive, fiend god hand, and didn't injure it in the slightest? Mu North's son was completely awestruck as well. It was like an ordinary person being struck by a ghost. The ghost would pass straight through the person. When Xiang Liu Fang and the sphere collided, the sphere shot straight through him. But Xiang Liu Fang, as a fiend god, had an incredibly powerful level of divine power. If it had been a ghost or something like a ghost, it would have been shattered. What queer thing is this? And in a lotus was amazed as well. She came from the Dongyan clan, but had never heard of such a treasure. Eh? Adept Vast Triver had long ago awakened fragments of his former memories, but he felt puzzled as well. Yu Wei originally had a look of puzzlement, but then she revealed a look of astonishment. Can this be? How can it? The black loop flew into the air directly above young flame Nong and Xiang Liaofang, and as it did, it suddenly emanated a soft, hazy glow, causing it to appear dreamlike and illusory. Shatter! Xiang Liaofang howled angrily. A long all appeared in his hand, filled with a boundless, savage aura, and Xiang Liaofang stabbed the black loop viciously with his all. Protect me! Young Flame Nong also felt that this black loop was extremely bizarre. He had already taken out that leaf-like Dao seal earlier, in order to protect against the black armored golem's sudden ambush if necessary. He now shattered it right away. Instantly, a hazy golden aura covered him with a tight defensive aura. This would be able to withstand for a few moments against even a full-strength attack from a loose immortal. Whoosh. Xiang Liu Fang's ferocious stab missed. It was as though the black loop didn't exist at all, or perhaps, it existed on a completely different plane. The black loop continued to emanate that hazy light. Suddenly an invisible, devouring ripple swept out. This is... Young Flame Nong and Xiang Liu Fang's faces both changed dramatically. They could both sense that invisible devouring force, and it was aimed directly at their souls. Ah! Uh, no! Young Flame Nong's face turned incomparably savage and terrified. He let out a hideous howl, and then, his soul left his body. Twisting and distorting, it was forcibly drawn into that black loop. Young Flame Nong was a peak once young adept, and ever since he was young, he had access to an extremely high-level visualization technique. His soul was comparable to a primal Taoist by now, and so naturally it could almost take physical form. Ning and everyone else personally witnessed his twisting, distorting soul howl in anguish as it was drawn into the black loop. What sort of treasure is this? How can it absorb my soul? How can, how can, how can this be my end? How could I have died to this Ji Ning? Is my soul about to be destroyed? Ji Ning, Ji Ning, spare me, spare me. Young flame known soul let out a soundless screech, continuing to twist and distort as it was drawn deeper and deeper within. I, Xiang Liu Fang was struggling in a berserk manner. And yet, his powerful fiend god's soul was still being forcibly ripped out from his fiend god body. As a primal level fiend god who was capable of creating a clone of himself, it was clear that his soul had long ago completely merged with his fiend god body, fusing into one. And yet, it was still being forcibly ripped out right now. It was an enormous soul, and it was letting out earth-shaking bellows that shook the entire hall, but it, too, was being drawn into the black loop. And so, just like that, Young Flame Nong and Xiang Liu Fang, despite their protective treasures or powerful divine bodies, had their souls forcibly devoured by this terrifying, bizarre treasure. Crack. The black loop let out a clear sound, like a piece of ice breaking. Instantly it shattered apart, dissipating and melting in midair, leaving nothing behind at all. Even Young Flame Nong and Xiang Liu Fang's souls had completely vanished. Slump. Young Flame Nong's body remained standing there for a moment, eyes completely blank, and then his body slumped gently to the ground. The mighty Xiang Liu Fang remained standing for a moment as well, but then he too collapsed to the ground, no longer breathing. This ancient fiend god, who had been born in the fiend god era, 
then been enslaved by the Young Flame clan, finally died on this day. Young Flame Nong and Xiang Fang just, just, just died like that. North Sun stared with huge eyes. He cleared his throat repeatedly, completely awestruck. Dead. This, this. Adept Vast River was completely awestruck as well. Nine Lotus and Yue both looked at the two collapsed, lifeless figures as well, one master, the other a servant. They felt as though they were in a dream. Xiang Liu Fang had been so powerful. He was an ancient fiend god. As for Young Flame Gnome, his background and status were both mighty as well. Earlier, when dealing with the monstrous Dao soldiers, he had taken out the likes of the Lock Scroll and the Polaris Starshifter treasure. They had watched him do this and had realized how truly extraordinary the next god Plume Duke truly was, and how many protective items he had. But the end result? They had both died. Ji Ning, who had been knocked flying backwards and had vomited out blood, revealed a look of astonishment as well. He had never imagined that the Black Loop would be this powerful. When he had originally selected the Black Loop, the giant yellow bear had said to him, Ji Ning, to tell the truth, I originally didn't want to give you this treasure. However, after you grow more powerful, it will no longer be of much use to you, as by the time you become a primal, you'll be able to carry around this underwater estate with you. The once young adept period. This is the period in an immortal cultivator's life when he is most susceptible to dying. This treasure was personally forged by my master. Although he did so casually, it is more than enough to keep you alive. You can consider it a second life, but it can only protect you once. A treasure personally forged by Dao's three lives, even though he made it in a casual way, it was simplicity itself for it to devour the souls of a primal fiend god and a once young level noble of a major clan. Ning couldn't help but sigh in astonishment to himself. He only knew that this black loop was meant for the sole purpose of drawing in and eradicating souls, but up till now, he had no idea how powerful it was. Ning was only amazed for a second. In the next instant, however, he understood that he had embarked on a path of no return. Actually, ever since Young Flame Nong had determined that Ning was a descendant of the Yuchi clan and moved to kill him, Ning had already embarked on a path of no return. Either he would be killed by Young Flame Nong, or he would kill Young Flame Nong. These were his only two options. But by killing Young Flame Nong, someone who was virtually guaranteed to be the next god Plume Duke, and whose background was incredibly astonishing. Young Flame Nong's status within his clan was similar to Ning's former status in the Ji clan of West Prefecture City. Ning had both the Lord Prefect and his own father supporting him. For it to be all but determined that Young Flame Gnome would be the next God Plume Duke meant that he definitely had an incredibly powerful figure supporting him as well. Young Flame Gnome had died. If only for emotional reasons alone, that powerful figure would come to seek revenge. Aside from saving face for the Young Flame Clan, revenge for Young Flame Gnome would also be an important reason. Ha! Ning actually began to laugh loudly. With a wave of his hand, he sent out a streak of earth fire which burnt the corpse of Shui Hongi to ash. He then collected the magic treasures which Shui Hongi had left behind. Shui Hongi had that immortal-ranked magic treasure. Naturally, since Ning was about to flee for his life, he would want to carry as many treasures with him as possible. Whoosh. With a single step, Ning moved to Young Flame Known and the fiend god Xiang Liu Fang's corpses. A streak of earth fire burned Young Flame Known's corpses to gray ash. But the earth fire was completely unable to damage Xiang Liu Fang's fiend god body at all. This caused Ning to frown. Come in here. He simply stored the entire fiend god body into his storage type magic treasure. Then, with a wave of his hand, Ning collected the key to the immortal estate. Ning quickly began to bind it. The key to the immortal estate was merely a talisman. Binding it was quite simple. The nearby North Sun, Yue, Nai Lotus, and Adept Vast River just watched as Ning burned the corpses of Shui Hongi and Young Flame Nong, then took away all their magic treasures. All of them were still in a state of shock. Senior Apprentice Brother Yu Yu, you killed Young Flame Nong? North Sun's mouth flapped open a few times. He was still speechless. More than ten or so Zifu disciples were still alive. They all watched Ning intently especially those two female Zifu-level maidservants who served Young Flame Gnome. Swish. Ning's gaze flickered past them. Suddenly, the air was filled with sword ki, 
which howled downwards, instantly killing all of the Death Sworn. If the Death Sworn remain alive, they would only reveal everything which happened here. Ning knew very well that these Death Sworn were completely loyal to Young Flame Gnome. They had watched everything happen. Once the Young Flame clan found these Death Sworn, everything would have been exposed. Ji Ning! Nai Lotus had a look of panic on her face. Tears actually began to appear. How could you have killed Young Flame Gnome? This, next, this, the Young Flame clan is definitely going to pursue and kill you. There's no way, no way to stop the Young Flame clan. He was one of the four ducklings of the imperial capital of the Grand Siad dynasty. He was extremely famous. For the sake of their reputation alone, the Young Flame clan would spare no expense in pursuing and killing you. Ning looked towards Nine Lotus. I had no choice. I only had two options, to let him kill me, or to kill him. Either he died or I died. What should I have done? Nine Lotus was so frantic, she began to cry. Previously, she had been trying her best to prevent hatred from developing between Ning and Young Flame Gnome, but in the end, the result was even worse than what she had feared. Young Flame Gnome, the exalted heir presumptive to the position of God Plume Duke of the Young Flame Clan, had died. No need to panic, Ning said with cold calmness. I killed Young Flame Gnome, but I trust that none of you will voluntarily report me. There's no way the Young Flame Clan would be able to ascertain, within such a short period of time, who the killer was. They will need to spend time to investigate. I'll immediately send you all out of this immortal estate. By then, you can return to your own homes, to the Dong Yen Clan and to the Black White College of Stillwater City. Nothing which happened here had anything to do with you. I was the killer. The Young Flame Clan won't act against the rest of you. But by the time they've fully investigated this matter, I'll have already arranged an escape plan and executed it. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, you are wrong. Yu Wei was frantic and restless as well, and she said hurriedly. According to legends, some extremely powerful figures, such as celestial immortals, are completely capable of causing a temporal inversion resulting in scenes from the past being replayed in the present. From this, they can discover right away that you were the culprit. Ning instantly felt his heart clench. Chapter 27, Traveling Alone Temporal Inversion? Ning instantly realized that the situation was far more dire than he had thought. He had previously believed that after having killed Young Flame Gnome, he would have some time before the Young Flame clan discovered him, which would allow him to arrange for his clan, the G clan, to escape. But now, it seemed, time was far too tight. Everyone, we have no time. I'll send you all out now. Go to a safe location. Because of me, all of you have been implicated. In order to save time, Ning began to converse mentally with them. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Yu Wei sent hurriedly. You don't need to worry about our safety. The Grand Xia dynasty has its rules, and the Young Flame clan cannot simply do what it wishes. As long as we return to the Black White College, we will be fine. The Grand Xia Dynasty's laws state that violence is forbidden within its commandery cities. In addition, we weren't the ones to kill Young Flame Gnome, and so the Young Flame clan would have no excuse to act against us. Right now you need to worry about yourself. You have two main options right now. The first is to flee. Flee to a place where the Young Flame clan cannot reach you and take revenge, such as other lesser or major worlds. Another option would to be to flee straight to the main headquarters of the Rain Dragon Guard. The Rain Dragon Guard remains the most powerful military force within the Grand Xia Dynasty. No matter how daring the Young Flame Clan is, they wouldn't dare to act against you while you are with the Rain Dragon Guard. The second option is to go up against them head on. Go straight to the Imperial Capital of the Grand Xia Dynasty. That's the capital city for the entirety of the Grand Xia Empire and the most supreme clans and schools of the entire Grand Xia Empire reside there. You can first go to the local Rain Dragon Guard branch. That place will be absolutely safe. Afterwards, you can participate in the Conclave of Immortal Destiny. Now that you have mastered a Grand Dao domain, you will definitely be able to perform with brilliant splendor at the Conclave. Given your talent, there will be quite a few powers which will want to draw you into their fold. By then, you can join a power that is opposed to the Young Flame Clan. The Young Flame Clan is powerful, but if you look at the Grand Xia Dynasty as a whole, 
you'll still find a few organizations which are more powerful than them and which hold vast grudges against them. Some of the grudges can be described as mortal enmity, and there are more than a few. After all, in this vast world which the imperial clan of the Grand Xia dynasty has unified, it is normal for the largest, most powerful clans, sects, and churches to have their disputes and grudges against each other. For example, the Kind Water One clan is even more powerful than the Young Flame clan too, and these two clans have felt mortal enmity towards each other ever since the Fiend God era. After countless generations of struggle, both sides have even lost celestial immortals. One leader after another has been assassinated by the other side as well. Given that you've killed Young Flame Gnome, powers like the Kind Water clan would definitely be willing to pull you into their fold. By relying on powerful clans such as them, you can continue to fight against the Young Flame clan. Two options, one to flee, the other to resist. These are the only two ideas I'm able to come up with in such a short period of time. Yue sent. Ning had previously been planning on fleeing. He hadn't expected that Yue would be able to provide yet another clear path for him. Right. The Young Flame clan ranked in the top 10 clans of the Grand Xia dynasty, but that meant there were nine other clans on par with them. The more powerful an organization was, the more fights it would get into over resources. This was extremely common. As for your clan, the Ji clan, Yue sent hurriedly. For now, you can have your clansmen lay low. You can also have some of the elites be sent to Stillwater City, or the imperial capital of the Grand Xia Dynasty. Murder and fighting is forbidden in commandery cities. If anyone dares to act in such a way, they will definitely suffer reprisals from the Grand Xia Dynasty. Although the Young Flame clan might be able to arrange for some wanted criminals to go commit suicide attacks, how powerful could these wanted criminals possibly be? These wanted criminals are all completely lawless. The more powerful they are, the less willing they are to do anyone's bidding, especially those fiend gods and loose immortals. It will be very hard for the Young Flame clan to invite those truly terrifying figures to intervene. The only option is for the Young Flame clan to send its own loose immortals out to annihilate your G clan. Even if they escape blame by claiming that the loose immortal did it of his own free will, that loose immortal would definitely die. Yue continued, sending mentally. No matter what, so long as a tribe can save its elites, in the future, it will flourish again. You are the genius which the G clan has finally produced after countless years. You need to protect yourself. Thank you, senior apprentice sister. Ning had some plans of his own, but upon hearing Yue's suggestions, he instantly felt as though a bigger picture had been revealed to him, giving him some new ideas as well. And, Ning also had a feeling, as though Yue seemed to have quite a clear understanding of the most powerful, supreme forces of the entire Grand Xia dynasty. Ji Ning, Nine Lotus sent hurriedly. Come with me. I'll take you to see the Forefather and have him send you out from this major world of the Grand Xia dynasty. As for the Ji clan, I'll come up with a way to protect some of their elites. In the future, when you are more powerful and come back, we can have the Ji clan flourish again. Senior apprentice brother, are you preparing to flee? I'll go with you. My master is close to the end of her life. She's going to enter her final, closed-door meditation. She's already taught me everything she can. I have nothing holding me back. Going with you and fleeing together is bound to be an exciting life. North Sun sent. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning, protect yourself. Only then will you have a chance to turn the tables in the future. Adept Vast River looked towards Ning. Ning laughed. Then, suddenly, Ning's gaze fell upon Nine Lotus. He sent mentally. Nine Lotus. Yes? Nine Lotus looked at Ning. I killed Young Flame Gnome. Regardless of whether I choose to flee to another world, or if I choose to join another supreme clan or alliance, I'll be unable to remain within Stillwater Commandery. I'll be a homeless wanderer. Would you be willing to go with me? Ning looked towards Nine Lotus, eyes filled with hope. Aye, 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 Nine Lotus hesitated. She could imagine the path which Ning would walk down in the future. It would be a path of incomparable danger. Should she accompany him on that wandering path? She felt an impulsive urge to agree. To wander to the edges of the world with Ning, to share life and death together. But then she thought of her clan. She was the next leader of the Dongyan clan. She couldn't possibly just go wandering off with Ning to the ends of the earth endlessly. 
no one could know how long the wandering would last. Nine Lotus. Ning could sense her hesitation. He couldn't help but feel a bit of pain in his heart. He knew that this request of his was a bit excessive. Only, in this moment, after having embarked on this path, Ning truly wanted for someone to walk it with him. This arduous immortal path, if someone could share it with him and share its burdens with him, Ning truly hoped that someone would be Nine Lotus. I'm sorry. Nine Lotus' eyes filled with tears as she looked at Ning. Gee Ning, I suddenly understand now. I simply can't wander the world by your side. I can't share life and death with you. The forefather's words were right. To be Dao companions, that means to be willing to die for someone. Dao companions, if immortals or Buddhas block your path, for the sake of bringing your Dao companion back, you would be willing to murder immortals or annihilate Buddhas. But I can't do it. I truly can't do it. I have my own path to follow and I, I don't want to give up my own path for you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Tears were streaming down Nina Lotus' face. No need to say anything further. Ning's eyes were glimmering with unshed tears as well. It's my fault for being too greedy. I'm embarking on a path of certain danger, and I'll definitely be fighting against the Young Flame clan for countless years to come. I went too far in what I asked for. I shouldn't dare to drag you in and implicate you as well. From now on, you are you. I am me. This immortal path. It's enough for me to walk it alone. Ning pointed into the distance. Whoosh. Instantly, a watery, rippling pattern appeared, followed by a tunnel. Outside the tunnel was the Skyrove Mountains of the Grand Xia Dynasty's major world. Ning immediately said, Senior Apprentice Sister Yue, Senior Apprentice Brother Vast Striver, Junior Apprentice Brother North Sun, and Nai Lotus, you can leave. Senior Apprentice Brother, I told you that I'm going to go adventuring with you. I have nothing holding me back. What the hell do I have to be afraid of? North Sun spoke with great urgency. This is an extremely dangerous path I am embarking on, Junior Apprentice Brother North Sun. Do you think I'm too weak for it? North Sun ground his teeth. Right. You are too weak. You can't help me. Instead, you'd slow me down. Ning gritted his own teeth as well as he responded. The nearby Yue spoke out to urge North Sun. Junior Apprentice Brother North Sun, don't be stubborn. This isn't the time to show your loyalty. Your strength truly is a bit too low. North Sun looked at Ning, his eyes turning slightly red. Senior Apprentice Brother, after my mother died, I no longer had any kinsmen left. After I joined the school, you became the closest person in my life. Long ago, I started to view you as I would an actual, biological brother. It is true that I am a bit weak, and I know that you said those words because you don't want me to be pulled into this. I'm not going to say anything else for now except, when I go back, I'm going to train hard. And if you die, I'll definitely take revenge for you. Ning's eyes turned red. He hadn't imagined, he truly hadn't imagined that North Sun, in his heart, viewed Ning as he would a real brother. Ha, don't worry. I won't die that easily. Tears in his eyes, Ning laughed loudly then said, Stop dawdling. Hurry up and leave. Nine Lotus felt all the more agony in her heart at this moment. Even North Sun had been willing to throw everything away, but her? She truly wanted to do the same, to throw everything away, to discard her clan, to roam the world by Ning's side. But she continued to hesitate. She just couldn't throw it all away. I'm sorry. Tears fell down Nina Lotus' face. Stay alive. You have to stay alive. And then, she turned her head and flew through the corridor to the Skyrove Mountains on the other side. North Sun Yue, an adept vast river all understood. Dao companions, Dao companions, what were Dao companions? Only those who would never abandon each other, even at their most critical moments, could be considered Dao companions. Nina Lotus' departure, and the words she had just spoken, they caused the three to understand that in the future, most likely Jean Ning and Nai Lotus would truly embark on completely separate immortal paths. Be careful, North Sun said. Stay alive. Yu Wei looked at Ning. You have to stay alive. Adept Vast River instructed as well. And then, the three flew through the corridor, arriving within the Skyrove Mountains. 
The corridor then shut. The Skyro of Mountains. They had returned to the world of the Grand Xia Dynasty. Nine Lotus, Yue, North Sun, and Adept Vast River all turned their heads to stare at the corridor. Through it, they could vaguely make out that solitary, lonely figure within the main hall on the other side. From today on, Ning was going to have to fight by himself. Nine Lotus stared through the tunnel. No matter how hard she tried, she couldn't stop her tears from continuing to fall. The choice she had made today was an incomparably agonizing choice for her. She wasn't able to abandon her tribe. She had her own dreams. She simply couldn't make herself discard everything for Ning's sake. Yue, North Sun, and Adept Vast River didn't say anything. This was because they, too, understood how rare it was for there to be a pair of Dao companions who would truly share life and death together, who would never leave each other, and whose lives would become as one. In fact, many so-called Dao companions would actually end up hating each other and becoming enemies. It wasn't uncommon for them to end up fighting over treasures and killing each other. To truly be together until death parted them, this was far too rare. Nilotus had too many other things she cared about. She couldn't throw them all away. Whoosh. The corridor swung shut, and they could no longer see to the other side. Let's go. North Sun gritted his teeth. Let's go. I'm going back to my clan. Nine Lotus returned by herself to the Dongyan clan, while North Sun, Adept Vast River, and Yue returned to the Black White College. Within the palace. From today onwards I shall traverse my immortal path alone. It's for the best, actually. By myself, I'll be much more carefree, Ning said with a laugh. Master, you still have us. Little Ching raised her serpentine head and called out to him. Ning looked towards the azure sky snake, then towards Uncle White, who had followed him silently this entire time. He felt a warm feeling in his heart. Right. I still have you too. Little Chin, Uncle White, let's go. Let's go and meet the monsters of this immortal estate. 1. The character for kind, Zhuan, is a reference to mythological Emperor Xuanxu, one of the legendary five emperors of prehistoric China. 2. The character for flame, Yen, is a reference to mythological Yen Emperor, the Flame Emperor. Chapter 28. The Thousand Year Pact. Within the immortal estate. The clan commanded by immortal witch Sui, along with the many sea wave Dao soldiers commanded by immortal Buha, continued to wait on the outside of the fifth palace. Although they were enraged and despairing, they still hoped, hoped that a miracle might occur. Monster clans. Suddenly, a voice rang out, and along with it, waves of divine will rolled out, instantly encompassing all of the monstrous Dao soldiers. Eh? All of the monsters looked over. Even immortal Witch Wei and immortal Duoha were shocked. A few hundred kilometers away, there was a fur-clad youth, with a little azure serpent coiled around his arm and a large, snowy white dog by his side. In the air around them hovered ancient, plain, unadorned wooden sticks. It was the Fushi Staff Formation. Space within a hundred kilometers of that human was completely locked, and there would be no way to teleport inside. You! Immortal Witch Wei and Immortal Dwaha immediately recognized him. Amongst the group of humans, there was indeed a fur-clad human who had a giant snowy white dog. The key to the immortal estate is now in my hands. Ning's voice rang out by the ears of every single monster. His divine sense had spread to a thousand kilometers. Naturally, he was able to send his voice to each and every one of them. Open. Ning held the key to the immortal estate in his hands. He sent his will forth, and next to him a corridor appeared. It was the corridor to the Skyrove Mountains in the outside world. Actually, just now, Ning had already used the key to leave and go to the Skyrove Mountains, then re-entered, having Little Ching lead him and Uncle White in a teleportation. Little Ching was actually far more powerful now than she had been in the wild marshes of the Jail Mountains. For near-distance blinks, she could bring others along with her. The main thing was that Ning had yet to bind the various branches. If he emerged directly from within the Witch River Palace, he would have been surrounded by the monsters. The key to the immortal estate. He is holding the key to the immortal estate in his hands. That's the outside world, the smell of the outside world. Immortal Witch Wei and Immortal Dwaha swept forward with their divine senses, and were even able to extend them into the corridor leading to the outside world. That's another world. 
Immortal Witch Wei, Immortal Buha, and the many monsters all stared towards Ning with even more blazingly desirous gazes. Although they were suspicious as to why the other human was no longer holding the key, the truth remained that this man before them was holding it now. They couldn't be bothered to overanalyze it. They knew that the appearance of this youth represented a desire by this youth to negotiate with them. Immortal Witch Wei and Immortal Dwaha were actually considering whether or not they should try to seize the key to the immortal estate. However, their earlier, repeated failures caused them to no longer dare to act rashly. Don't try anything. I've already set up a formation around me, and the corridor is already open. I can leave at any time. In addition, even if you truly were to attack, you wouldn't be able to kill me. Ning said. He had that other protective magic treasure, and also the magic treasures which Young Flame Gnome had left behind. His words were completely true. Immortal Witch Wei and Immortal Dwaha, as well as the other monsters, all calmed down. They no longer dared to make any more gambles. What do you want? Immortal Witch Wei asked. I offended a powerful a tribe, the Young Flame Clan, and the clan is going to come act against me. They might even act against my tribe. Ning's divine sense was sending a message to every single monster. My tribe is located in a commandery city of the Grand Xia Dynasty, the city of 10,000 swords. I wish for you, the monsters of this immortal estate world, to go to the city of 10,000 swords and protect my tribe. Protect them for a thousand years. After that period of time, I'll release you and give you your freedom. As for the key to the immortal estate, I can just give it to you. The key to the immortal estate wasn't of much use to Ning. There was no way he could carry the Witch River immortal estate with him. What was he supposed to do with it? In addition, he had the underwater estate, an even finer estate left behind by Taoist three lives. As for the treasures within the Witch River immortal estate, the Tao repository and the treasure vault had already been looted clean. Protect them for a thousand years? Immortal Witch Wei and Immortal Buha along with the tens of thousands of monsters, were both amazed and delighted. Although a thousand years was a fairly long period of time, monsters had extremely long lifespans to begin with. To simply protect a tribe for a thousand years, they would then be able to go to the wider, vast world. They would even receive the key to the immortal estate. They didn't even dare to imagine something like this previously. They had been preparing to be fleeced, and had even been willing to hand over part of their Dao armors as their offer for peace. But Ning had no desire for the Dao armors. Wearing the Dao armors, these monsters would be ten times or even tens of times more powerful. That was what he wanted, them to be powerful. Your tribe is located in the city of ten thousand swords of the Grand Xia Dynasty? Based on what I know, the Grand Xia Dynasty is extremely strict in its prohibition against battles within commandery cities. If anyone dares to fight within one, they will suffer pursuit and apprehension by the Grand Xia Dynasty. This young flame clan that wishes to act against your tribe, they shouldn't dare to actually attack your city, should they? Immortal Blaha asked. Although they had always been trapped within here, they had passed down records regarding the Grand Xia Dynasty's world from generation to generation, and so they knew some of the most basic things. Correct, they won't dare to launch an actual attack. However, if they were to send some wanted criminals or some death's warrant to attack my tribe, Ning sent to them. These criminals and death's warrant would most likely be at the Wanxiang level or the primal Taoist level. Loose immortals? The chances of there being one of them should be very, very low. Celestial immortals? That's even less likely. To enter a commandery city of the Grand Xia dynasty and launch an attack was a challenge and affront to the entire dynasty. Anyone who did so would be killed without question. For the sake of young flame gnome, who was already dead, would they really be willing to sacrifice a loose immortal, just for the sake of giving vent to their rage and killing a backwater tribe? The chances were quite low. As for sacrificing a celestial immortal? That was virtually impossible. It must be understood that every single celestial immortal was considered one of the true foundations for a clan. A single word from a celestial immortal could even cause the clan leader to be changed. If Ning were to become a celestial immortal, he would become one of the figures capable of influencing the entire Grand Xia dynasty. Even the entire Young Flame clan would treat him with courtesy. If it had been a celestial immortal who had killed Young Flame Gnome, most likely the Young Flame clan would just go negotiate with him, 
rather than pursue and attack him. Thus, there was no way the Young Flame clan would be so stupid as to send a celestial immortal into a commandery city and begin a slaughter. We know a little bit about the Grand Xia Empire's world. It is already incredible for the Supreme Clans to have even just one or two celestial immortals. There is no way they would let them end up as wanted criminals. Immortal Buha and Wichui exchanged a glance, then made up their minds. We have decided to agree to your request. For a thousand years, we shall be stationed at that commandery city of the Grand Xia Empire, the city of ten thousand swords, and protect your clan. Given our power, even if Supreme Loose Immortals come, we should be able to easily defeat them. However, if a Celestial Immortal comes, there is nothing we can do. If a Celestial Immortal attacks, I'll just accept it. Ning sent. Monsters, all of you need to now swear an oath to the Tao of the Heavens. I shall do the same. Fine. That's how it should be done. The monsters were indeed afraid that Ning would later go back on his word. It was best if they all swore oaths to the Tao of the Heavens. Soon, with Ning personally choosing the words to the oaths, both came to an agreement on what to say, then swore the oaths. Tens of thousands of monsters simultaneously swore an oath to the Tao of the Heavens. Ripples of power from the Tao of the Heavens descended upon them, and through his divine sense, Ning could clearly see every single monster making the oath. These 30,000 plus monsters were the elites of this entire immortal estate world, more than 99% of the dire monster immortal cultivators were present. Oaths to the Tao of the Heavens were useless against mortals and useless against ordinary monsters, but upon monsters or humans embarking upon the immortal path, it would have tremendous effect. These monstrous Tao soldiers were all at the Zifu level at the very least. The 30,000 plus monsters, along with two loose immortals, all swore their oaths to the Tao of the Heavens, and Ning, in turn, was no longer worried about them going back on their word. Naturally, he swore an oath as well. There is no time to waste, Ning sent mentally. That expert from the Young Flame clan might even be a celestial immortal, and he will soon reach the Witch River immortal estate. Once he comes, he might annihilate all of you. We need to immediately leave. What? Immortal Witch Wei, Immortal Bleha, and the others were all shocked. The two immortals were quite decisive, in the face of an opportunity that would change the destinies of all the monsters in the immortal estate world, they immediately ordered the necessary arrangements be made. Daoist Jinbao, Daoist Wichaxel, each of you go lead a thousand Dao soldiers and gather all of our clansmen within the immortal estate world, then lead them to the city of ten thousand swords. This is a map of the Stillwater Commandery of the Grand Xia Empire. There is a mark here for the city of ten thousand swords. Ning flew over as well. Given that they had all sworn oaths to the Tao of the Heavens, they were naturally now in the same boat. We'll lead these soldiers to head there right away. Immortal Witch Wei and Immortal Bluha both said. Everyone, get in. The two immortals each produced a giant sack. Huhish. Not a single one of the many monstrous Tao soldiers resisted. All of them allowed themselves to be drawn into the sacks, leaving behind just Immortal Jinbao, Immortal Witch Axel, and the two thousand Tao soldiers under their command. Let's go. Whoosh. A corridor appeared leading to the Skyro of Mountains. Ning, Immortal Witch Sway, Immortal Bweha, and Taoist Witch Axel all flew out. They appeared within the gorge in the Skyro of Mountains. Even the aura and the smell here was different compared to the Immortal Estate world. This was an aura of a vast, endless world, the smell of an entire, major world. It's different. It really is different. This is the Grand Xia Dynasty's world. Immortal Witch Sway, Immortal Dwaha, and the others were all stunned and excited. This is the key to the Immortal Estate. Ning handed the key directly to Taoist Witch Axel. I'm giving it to you now. Immediately lead the remaining monsters to quickly depart from the Immortal Estate world. If you delay, the situation might change. Right. Taoist Witch Axel accepted the key, then immediately generated a corridor, returning to the Immortal Estate and then shutting the corridor off. Let's go. Ming said. The city of 10,000 swords is 600,000 kilometers to the north. Let's go. Immortal Dwaha, that powerful old fellow, personally executed a teleportation, bringing Immortal Witch Wei, Ning, Little Ching, and Uncle White with him in a long-distance teleport. Whoosh. 
Ning realized that the surrounding environment had changed. He took a careful look then said, We were slightly off. The city of 10,000 swords is roughly 26,000 kilometers to our southeast. Then I'll just teleport us again. The shorter the distance, the easier a teleportation was. Immortal Bwaha easily teleported them a short distance. In the middle of the air, surrounded by clouds, at a location just a few hundred kilometers outside the city of 10,000 swords. A spatial ripple appeared then from within it emerged Immortal Bwaha, Immortal Witch Sway, and a fur-clad youth, a little azure serpent, and a large, snowy white hound. Here we are. Ning stared towards the distance. His fiend-godlike eyesight could easily see the distant commandery city, just a few hundred kilometers away. This caused Ning to let out a sigh of relief. Previously, when he had been chatting with the monsters in the immortal estate, he had done so through divine sense, so as to save as much time as possible. He had been worried about taking too much time and unforeseen things happening. Ning pointed towards the distant commandery city. That city is the city of 10,000 swords, the city which the monster clans of the immortal estate must protect for a thousand years. Chapter 29, Patriarch Arcanum Within the city of 10,000 swords Inside a large, secluded palace What? A tribe even more powerful than the Northmont clan of Stillwater. G9 Fire, G True Keep, and Granny Shadow were completely petrified. This is Immortal Dwaha, while this is Immortal Witch Way. Both are extremely powerful loose immortals. After describing the dangerous situation, Ji Ning moved to introduce the two by his side. Loose immortals? Ni Fire, and the others felt dazed. Legendary, exalted loose immortals were before them, and two of them at that. They will command 30,000 monstrous Dao soldiers to protect our city of 10,000 swords, Ning said. They are all wearing Dao armors. And so with these two loose immortals in command of 30,000 monstrous Dao soldiers, even if tens of loose immortals come, they should be able to withstand them. They will protect our city for a thousand years. Unless a celestial immortal or someone with a celestial immortal's power attacks us, our city should be completely safe. Nigh Fire, True Keep, and Granny Shadow were cultivators, after all. Despite still being stunned, they quickly regained their equilibrium. You three can decide what arrangements need to be made for the tribe, Ning said. You know more about these things than me anyhow. Don't worry, True Keep nodded. With such a powerful army of Dao soldiers stationed here, and with this being a commandery city of the Grand Xia Empire that is under special protection from the Rain Dragon Guard as well, anyone who dares attack will be pursued throughout the entire Grand Xia dynasty. No matter how powerful the Young Flame Clan is, they wouldn't possibly be willing to have one of their legendary celestial immortals become a wanted criminal. Celestial immortals were figures of legends. It wasn't even known for certain whether or not the Northmont clan of Stillwater had a celestial immortal. As for the Black White College, in its countless years of existence, it had produced countless loose immortals, but only a single celestial immortal. Little Ching, Uncle White, the two of you shall stay here for now. Here is a talisman. Ning handed a talisman to the human-shaped Uncle White. If you notice that the talisman has shattered, then teleport directly towards Serpent Wing Lake and reunite with me. If the talisman remains whole, then you are absolutely not permitted to come. Right. Little Ching and Uncle White both nodded. At a critical moment like this, they wouldn't let him down. Ning, son, be careful. Uncle White instructed. Ning nodded and smiled. I'll leave now. After this departure, I probably won't be able to return for a very long period of time. Ning looked towards Nai Fire, True Keep, and Granny Shadow. It was I who brought this calamity upon the tribe. In the future, I'll make up for it. Don't say such things. Nai Fire scolded in a low voice. Remember you have to protect yourself. Only if you are alive shall our G-Clan have a chance to flourish. For a tribe to produce a genius like Ning was completely a matter of luck. I'm leaving now. Ning immediately used a lesser teleportation Dao seal. Whoosh. He disappeared from within the hall. In the air above Bright Heart Island of Serpent Wing Lake. A ripple in the air could be seen, and then Ning emerged. Autumn Leaf. Upon landing, Ning immediately sent his voice out, calling towards Autumn Leaf. Soon, a light gray-robed Autumn Leaf emerged. 
she looked at Ning in surprise and delight. Young master, you can no longer stay on Bright Heart Island. Hurry up and have everyone on the island move away to the city of Ten Thousand Swords. As for you, you need to leave immediately. Ning instructed. Autumn Leaf was stunned. What, what happened? Bright Heart Island had long ago become her home. She had poured her heart out in developing this place. Don't ask. I don't have time to explain in detail. When you arrive in the City of Ten Thousand Swords, you can ask Uncle White and the others, and they will let you know. Right now, you need to make the arrangements right away, then immediately leave. This is a lesser teleportation Dao seal. You can use it to teleport up to 10,000 kilometers away. Teleport straight to the city. Ning handed her a Dao seal. Autumn Leaf immediately understood how grave the situation was. Actually, even if a celestial immortal of the Young Flame clan was to personally investigate, he would have to first go into the Witch River Immortal Estate, find the Witch River Palace in which Young Flame Nong had been killed, then utilize a temporal inversion technique. Even if, through the usage of such a technique, he discovered that Ning was the killer, he would probably need a bit of time before finding out about Ning's background. This entire process would take time, and in truth, by the time that Celestial Immortal might have made his way to Swallow Mountain, much time would have passed. And even if he came, he wouldn't recognize Autumn Leaf, nor know about the relationship between her and Ning. Thus, there was absolutely no need at all for Autumn Leaf to use the Lesser Teleportation Dao Seal. Ning, however, was uneasy. In order to prevent any unknown variables from arising, he thus instructed Autumn Leaf to use the Dao Seal. Swoosh. After making the arrangements, Autumn Leaf, per Ning's request, was forced to use this lesser teleportation Dao Seal. Phew. Ning let out a sigh of relief. Alright. He pushed open the door to the private room he normally stayed in, entered, then shut the door. With but a thought, he caused the illusion of a giant grizzly head to appear within the room. The grizzly head swallowed Ning within its mouth, and Ning disappeared from Serpent Wing Lake, entering the underwater estate in another world. The imperial capital of the Grand Xia Dynasty. This was the administrative heart of this entire major world. There were many loose immortals and primal Taoists here, as well as various supreme tribes, schools, and sects as well. In fact, even some of the most powerful forces from other major worlds would arrange for spies and intelligence agents to be placed here. This was truly a place where the fish swam with the dragons. Immortals were as common as the clouds, and unfathomable in their power. The Young Flame clan's estate in this place took up a thousand kilometers. It was incomparably luxurious. Within a quiet study inside their estate, a golden-robed man with a crown on his head was seated before a desk, reading various intelligence reports. He was the leader of the Young Flame clan, the current god Plume Duke. The Kind Water clan is becoming increasingly excessive in their actions. The golden-robed man frowned and muttered to himself. Clan leader, clan leader. Suddenly, a panicked voice rang out. Upon hearing this voice, the golden-robed man's face sunk. He hated it when his subordinates lost their bearings and grew panicked. However, this particular subordinate was his personal attendant, and one who should have known the rules. The door was pushed open, and a middle-aged man dressed in blue robes charged in, then knelt down and said in sobbing voice, Clan leader, young master, young flame gnome, he he. Young flame gnome? What about him? The golden-robed man frowned. He died. The blue-robed middle-aged servant spoke out in a terrified, frantic voice. What? The golden-robed man rose to his feet, revealing a look of astonishment. How did he die? How do you know he died? You can't say such things unless you are absolutely certain. His life tablet in the ancestral hall has shattered. The blue-robed servant called out. The golden-robed man stood there in the study. After a few moments of silence, he said in a low voice. Investigate. Send out my orders. Within the time needed to boil a kettle of tea, Young Flame Nong's whereabouts needs to be discovered. Yes, the blue-robed servant said hurriedly. Young Flame Nong actually died? He should have gone to the Witch River Immortal Estate. How could he have died? Even if he wasn't able to bind the Witch River Immortal Estate, he had a greater teleportation Dao Seal on him. Even within the Immortal Estate, he would have been able to teleport out to the Grand Xia Dynasty's world. 
and he had that fiend god with him, Xiang Liofang. The golden-robed man was pondering to himself. Young Flame Gnome was one of his juniors. They weren't exactly on close terms with each other, and in fact, he didn't really like Young Flame Gnome. But Young Flame Gnome had a celestial immortal supporting him. Although on the surface, the most powerful figure in a clan was its titular clan leader, compared to the celestial immortals who were the patriarchs of the clan, the clan leader was far inferior. These celestial immortal patriarchs who had lived countless years were the true foundation of a clan. The birth of every celestial immortal would cause the entire clan to celebrate, and the fall of every celestial immortal would be hidden for as long as possible. This was why no one was certain as to how many celestial immortals a clan had. For example, the Northmont clan of Stillwater. Did it have any surviving celestial immortals or not? This was a mystery. How many celestial immortal patriarchs did the Young Flame clan have? This, too, was a mystery. Even the god Plume Duke himself only knew of three celestial immortal patriarchs within the clan. As for Young Flame Gnome, he only knew of one. But even the god Plume Duke wasn't certain as to exactly how many celestial immortals his clan had. Clan leader. The blue-robed servant returned, saying hurriedly with respect. Three days ago, young master young flame known used a teleportation array to go to Stillwater Commandery, then headed towards the Witch River Immortal Estate. I'm not capable of locating the exact location of the estate. Right. The golden-robed man nodded. I need to go on a visit. For now, you are not to inform any outsiders of young flame known's death. Yes. Soon, nine golden flood dragons, pulling an immortal carriage behind them, soared out from within the Young Flame clan's estate. They howled through the air, departing from the imperial capital of the Grand Xia dynasty and entering the azure void of the skies. At the peak of a tall volcano which stretched through the clouds, the nine golden flood dragons, pulling the immortal carriage, descended from the skies then flew into the mouth of the volcano. The last time this volcano had erupted was hundreds of thousands of years ago. They continued to fly down through the opening. Bubbling streams of lava could be seen in the depths below. In the center of the lava flows, a towering, red-haired giant could be seen, reclining in the lava. This red-haired giant lay there as though lying within a personal bathtub. His head was supported by a pillow of stone, and his feet pressed against another stone. His eyes were even larger than the immortal carriage. Senior Bayfire. The golden-robed man stood in front of the immortal carriage and called out. Oh! The red-haired giant opened his eyes and looked at the golden-robed man. After pondering a moment, he said slowly, You are Young Flame Fujian, the current clan leader and god Plume Duke? I am. The golden-robed man was still quite humble. This was because he knew who the fiend god in front of him was. This fiend god was surnamed Bayfire and was an incomparably powerful warrior who had belonged to an extremely mighty fiend god tribe, back in the fiend god era. He was a void level fiend god. However, although he was only a void level fiend god, his true combat power was absolutely on the level of celestial immortals. In the past, it had been one of the most brilliant, outstanding patriarchs of the young flame clan who had subdued and tamed him. Unfortunately, that patriarch had already fallen over the passage of countless years. What is it? The red-haired giant asked. Are the three patriarchs still within this major world? The golden-robed man asked. The red-haired giant said slowly. Patriarch infatuation left this major world more than 10,000 years ago. Where he went, and when he shall return, is unknown. Patriarch Sunfish, just a few decades, went to meet with friends in the Deva realm. Generally speaking, he will spend a century in the Deva realm when meeting with friends. Only Patriarch Arcanum remains here, in secluded meditation. Young Flame Gnome just died. This is a matter of grave import. I'd like to trouble you, Senior Bayfire, to make a report to Patriarch Arcanum. The golden-robed man said hurriedly. Young Flame Gnome? The next clan leader of your clan? The red-haired giant laughed. Your next clan leader actually died? What a joke. I'll go help you make the report. The red-haired giant closed his eyes. Moments later, he opened them again. Patriarch Arcanum will arrive right away. The location of the place where Patriarch Arcanum was secluded was a mystery. Only some of Patriarch Arcanum's closest confidants knew. Not even the god Plume Duke knew. 
Whoosh. In the air above the lava, spots of stellar light suddenly appeared. The brilliant spots of stellar light began to link together, seemingly forming a mysterious, arcane formation. Suddenly, a tall, skinny, narrow-eyed elder stepped out from within that swirl of countless stars. In this moment, it seemed as though the entire world was bowing towards him, as though he and he alone was the only master of the world. Patriarch Arcanum The golden-robed man hurriedly bowed with respect. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.